Hey family, welcome back. The coronavirus setup. My little one's eating gelato. And uh, she's having fun. So I didn't want to like move all her stuff or, you know, take up space. So I'm over here hiding in the quarantine. <laughs> okay, we are in the section, a new society being built. This paragraph starts with the title, the brotherhood between the Muslims. The masjid being thus constructed, the prophet, peace be upon him, next turned his attention to cementing the ties of mutual brotherhood among the Muslims of Medina. Al-Ansar, the helpers, and Al-Muharjirun, the immigrants, it was indeed unique in the history of the world. Okay, I have to remember. I, this was repeated, but I just have to underline it every time. That way it becomes like solidified in my mind. A gathering of 90 men, half of whom immigrants and the other helpers assembled in the house of Anas bin Malik. Anas bin Malik. Where the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave the spirit of brotherhood his official blessing. When either of the two persons who had been paired as brothers passed away, his property was inherited by his brother in faith. This practice continued to the following verse was revealed at the time of the Battle of Badr, and the rule, regular rule of inheritance was allowed to take its usual course. But kindred by blood are nearer to one another regarding inheritance. 875. Brotherhood in faith was holding a subordinate every distinction of race and kindred and supporting the Islamic principle. None is superior to the other except on the basis of piety and God-fearing. Okay, so like the more moral you are, huh, because it's hard to judge who's truly being piety and God-fearing and who's being a wacko fundamentalist extremist sometimes I think people become so we call it anal and 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 weird and they freak out over everything and you have to step back and be like is that really wisdom and holiness or are you twisting it and becoming so freaked out by everything I don't know it's it's interesting it really is is like I feel like the wise elders like what this would be talking about it's definitely a good example of like Mufti Mek it's not it wouldn't be an example of like somebody who is just hates everything you know like everything you do is like bad right you watch cartoons oh that's really bad like I don't know there's some people who like everything is bad for them and they mask that as piety you know what I mean I don't know Interesting. It's an interesting thing to think about, for sure. What do you think, family? The prophets, peace be upon him, attached to that brotherhood a valid contract. It was not just meaningless words, but rather a valid practice relating to blood and wealth, rather than a passing impulse taking the form of accidental greeting. The atmosphere of brotherhood created a spirit of selflessness infused deeply in the hearts of his followers and produced very healthy results. For example, Sa'id bin Arabi, a helper, said to his fellow brother Abdur Rahman bin Auf, I am the richest man among the helpers. I am glad to share half of my property with you. I have two wives. I am ready to divorce one, and after the expiry of her ida, the prescribed period of, for a woman of divorcee to stay within her house unmarried, you may marry her. That's what, wait. Well, isn't that a little weird? Why would somebody like you're married to a lady, you're gonna divorce her, but then you offer her to somebody else? Be a little gross. You they kissed her and then you kiss her. Be a little weird. But Abdur Rahman bin Auf was not prepared to accept anything, neither property nor home. So he blessed his brother and said, "Hey, wait a minute. Wait, our brotherhood." Wait, are they blood brothers or, or religious brothers? Huh. And said, kindly direct me to the market so that I may make my fortune with my own hands. And he did prosper and got married very shortly by his own struggle. The helpers were extremely generous to their brethren in faith. Abu Huraira reported that they once approached the Prophet, peace be upon him, with the request that their orchards of palm trees should be distributed equally between the Muslims of Medina 
and the brethren from Mecca. Medina and Mecca. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, was hesitant to put this heavy burden upon them. It was, however, decided that the emigrants would work in the orchards along with the helpers, and yield would be divided equally among them. Well, that's good. You're supposed to have, you know, some equality when it comes to labor. Such examples point directly to the spirit of cordiality, sacrifice, and selflessness on the part of the helpers. Yeah. Sacrificing, having selflessness, those attributes are very relevant right now. The helpers, and also the feeling of appreciation, gratitude, and self-respect that the emigrants held dear to their hearts. They took only what helped them make a reasonable living. In short, this policy of mutual brotherhood was so wise and timely that many obstinate problems were resolved wonderfully and reasonably. Interesting. So we have the brotherhood between the Muslims, so the helpers and the immigrants. Okay, Battle of Badr. All right. The next paragraph, fam, is titled, A Charter of Islamic Alliance. Just as the Prophet, peace be upon him, had established a code of brotherhood among the believers, so too he was keen on establishing friendly relations between the Muslims and non-Muslim tribes of Arabia. He established a sort of treaty aiming at ruling out all pre-Islamic enmities and intertribal hostilities. Look, I like how that's worded. Pre-Islamic enmities and intertribal hostilities. It's a word sandwich, I like it. He was so careful not to leave any area in the charter that would allow pre-Islamic traditions to creep in or violate the new environment he wanted to establish. Herein, we look over some of its provisions. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. This is a document from Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, concerning the immigrants and helpers and those who followed and strove with them. Okay. All right. So this is a... All right. These are provisions. Okay. Number one, they are one nation to the exclusion of other people. Okay. One nation. So like... Uh, it's interesting to think of religion as a nation. Because I guess for my life, I always thought of it as like it's a community. But when you say community, it's smaller than a nation. And the nation is much larger. And you have more duties to your nation than maybe to your community. So it's a good way to put it as the word nation, right? It's a community is a nation. And a nation is a community. But on the scale, one is larger than the other, right? Requires more. Two, the immigrants of Quraysh shall unite together and pay blood money from among themselves and shall ransom honorably their prisoners. Blood money. I heard a very interesting dude talk about the, the symbolic meanings of blood money. That your money, it was Jordan Maxwell, that the more your soldiers have died, the more worthy your money is, and that's how we get the saying blood money. Because the more people who've died for the sake of your cause, and your vision, and your ideas, that means that your money is worth more. So when you say blood money, it's literally people who've spilt blood and that's given you the power of your money. It's very interesting. I've read a lot of that guy's books. But he was on a podcast recently, and it was interesting what he said. And shall ransom honorably their prisoners. Every tribe of the helpers shall unite together as they were at first, and every section among them will pay a ransom for releasing its relative prisoners. Number three, believers shall not leave anyone poor among them by not paying his redemption money or blood money in kind. No person left behind, that's a cool thing. Whoever is rebellious or whoever seeks to spread enmity and sedition, the hand of every God-fearing Muslim shall be against him, even if he be his son. Hey, look at that. Spreading sedition, and enmity, and rebelliousness. Number five. A believer shall not kill another believer, nor shall he support a disbeliever against a believer. Oh, that's a hard one. I get not killing a believer, but sometimes if your friend isn't a believer, and then you have another friend who's a believer, even if your believer friend is in the wrong, 
and your disbeliever friend is in the right, it can be hard. That's a hard one. Six, the protection of Allah is one and is equally extended to the humblest of believers. So wait a minute. Number five then, right? So number one is like the nation excludes of other people. You got five. It says you need to take the support of the believer. So your duty, your union essentially, is stronger to your religious comrades than it is to any other leaning, which is interesting. Think about it. So, uh, yeah. Seven. The believers are supported by each other. That's good. Community. You can't have a community without support, right? Eight. Whosoever of the Jews follows us shall have aid and help. They shall not be injured, nor any enemy be aided against them. Nine. The peace of the believers is indivisible. No separate peace shall be made when believers are fighting in the way of Allah. Conditions must be fair and equitable to all. Fair and equal. 10. It shall not be lawful for a believer who holds by what is in this document and believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment to help a criminal, nor give him refuge. Those who give him refuge and provide him help shall have the curse and anger of Allah on the Day of Resurrection. Their indemnity is not accepted. Look at that. To help a criminal and give them refuge. So, if you are truly a believer, criminals are not just the petty criminals, right? It's not just like the gangbangers. It's not just like uh, the obvious crimes. I'd say that the corporate finance crimes should, I think, fit into this category of criminality. Those politicians who pass very repressive, draconian, slimy bills, right? That's a criminal activity, but it's what we call like, not white, is it called white collar? Blue collar crime, white crime, white collar crime. There are different levels of crime, right? In criminology, right? But the finance crime is more of like polished crime, right? It's not as violent and vicious because it comes out through legislation and has a ripple effect in society, and it's harder to trace back to the original cause. If someone carjacks you, you can see the direct connection. But when someone says, oh, uh, we're going to slip in on this, you know, terms of service or terms of conditions, blah, 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 and this is your punishment, and this is your punishment, and you'll pay the fee of this, and a fee of that, and a fee of this, and a fee of that, it's like a sort of criminality that's way more subversive. So... That's the thing that people should really look at. Like car salesmen who are very slimy, right? Stock brokerages who tell you to invest your funds and your 401k in something that maybe is volatile that they know they'll get a piece of the pie of, but that you will eventually lose your money, right? Very interesting things to think about right there. Mm. 11. Killing a believer deliberately with no good reason entails killing the killer unless their heir is considered otherwise. Yeah, so just random, raw killing. Yeah, that's definitely bad. For sure, for sure. Can't argue with that. 12. Whenever you differ about a matter, it must be referred to Allah and to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay, it means like turning in prayer to them maybe? To be like, hey, um... We have this issue, we gotta solve it, turn to Allah. Maybe when it said turn to Muhammad, maybe that means in the context of like when he was physically there. Because from what I understand, you don't pray to Muhammad. You pray about Muhammad, but you don't pray to Muhammad. So you cannot turn to Muhammad, but you can, if, if you're living back then, consult him, right? But now it would mean that you turn to Allah, right? In prayer. What do you think? Let me know. Wow. So the provisions you know, in the document concerning the immigrants and the helpers seems pretty, you know, pretty, pretty fair. I mean, it's nothing that's extreme, nothing that's, like, petty. It's, you know, pretty, pretty basic, I'd say. Sounds, it's nothing, nothing new, I would say. Like, it's, like, new to that time, geographical location, but law-wise, judicial-wise, Governmental organization wise, revolutionary wise, it's pretty fair, pretty standard. I don't know how you can really argue with it or get offended by it.
for people who just want to get offended about everything. I like 11, though. 11 is really interesting. And look, it talks about the Jews. Interesting. All right, let me know what you think, because I know some of y'all know so much it blows my mind. So let me know.